If you're an advanced level tennis player and you have access to a ball machine, then you're super lucky. There's so much you can do to work on different skills that you need to take your game to the next level. I'm gonna work through a training session today and I'm gonna take you with me. Let's go ahead and get right down to work. First things first, make sure that you start off slow. I did a full dynamic warm up to get my body moving and then I just hit some really easy half speed shots kind of down the middle. I alternated between forehand and backhand. Just do your, do your body a favor, ramp up slowly. I'm not gonna show you a whole lot of that but I just need to make sure to let you know that if you don't begin with that, your chances of injury are, are much, much higher. It's also easier to get your timing going when you start off slow and calm. Once my body got warmed up, I set the ball machine to hit a, a pretty hard and heavy, a lot of topspin and a lot of depth. You'll see the ball bouncing like four or five feet from the baseline and dipping into the court quite a bit. I today wanted to work on receiving a heavier, faster ball and sending it back with confidence. If you've seen any of my matches recently, you know that I've struggled with getting kind of overpowered by more aggressive players on the other side. And so today I wanted to train receiving that type of harder, more aggressive shot and sending it back with a confident swing. Instead of backing up, keeping myself firmly planted on the baseline and then taking it on the rise and sending it back. By the way, my foot, I messed up my foot several months ago. That's why I'm not running. I'm kind of more staying in place. That's just kind of where I'm, where I'm at right now. And that's a great thing about the ball machines. You can have it send you whatever shot you want and you don't have to worry about giving another partner a great workout. Another critical skill for high level competition is being able to take a weak sitter and put it away with offense and with authority. So the next drill I did was I had the ball machine sit me up a, a weak kind of floating shot short in the court and I need to work on taking the ball higher around shoulder height. So I spent some time just hitting aggressive shots off those weak balls. My goal was to try to take the ball up as high as I was comfortable. And I kept my target cross court on this and just tried to keep the racket head speed nice and high so that I can practice hitting just the right angle for a put away shot when I work the point well enough to get rewarded with that type of a sitter. Next, I changed the feed over to my backhand side and I changed the feed a little bit. I've been working on rebuilding my backhand. It's not nearly up to the level that my forehand is. I can't hit it as heavily. I've made some big technical changes. So on this side, I kept the feet a little bit lower, a little bit flatter. I tried to maintain kind of a medium pace. It's not as hard, not as heavy as the forehand side, and that's on purpose. I don't want to overwhelm myself, but I wanted it to be kind of a medium, solid-ish ball. And I've just recently kind of worked my way up to this speed, receiving a feed from the other side, and my goal was just to maintain a nice, calm tempo, hit it solidly, you know, not tentatively, and just work on my timing to send the ball across court with a nice, solid shot. So nothing fancy here, nothing super aggressive or high level, to be honest with you. This is more, more just kind of for me, grooving my technical changes that I've been making with my backhand drive. If you're enjoying seeing this behind the scenes look at my training and you'd like more ideas to use for your own game, make sure to get a free membership over at EssentialTennisAcademy.com. You can get free access for, for a full week for all my training sessions, all of my matches, plus training modules that show you step-by-step -step how to develop every type of shot in the game of tennis. So go to EssentialTennisAcademy.com. After that, I changed the depth of my feeds. I kept the spin, I kept the speed, and I kept the, the width, the placement the same, but I raised the height of the feeds so that the ball was landing just inside the baseline. This is something I highly recommend for all levels of play. If you wanna reach high levels of competition, you have to be able, just like on my forehand side, to receive a ball that's coming in deep with decent pace, take it right off the bounce, and send it back strongly. And this was definitely one of the more challenging for me drills today was finding my timing, finding my rhythm, and lining my strings up and finding uh, the right contact point with my new technique. And honestly, I'm, I'm happy with how I, I did today. I haven't done a lot of stress testing of my new backhand swing yet. This is definitely some of the more challenging uh, training that I've done on my own without the, ho the help of uh, a coach on the court with me. And I was pretty happy with how I did. So if you want to go toe to toe with strong ground stroke players, training on your weaker side, which for me is my backhand side, for most players it's the backhand side, taking a deep strong shot on the rise and sending it back nice and confidently is a really critical skill. 
I like coming to the net a lot. So next up, I set up the ball machine to hit a low, hard, flat shot, kind of just over the top of the net. And I set the spread so that it was kind of just wide enough to be a forehand or a backhand to me. And then I set the machine to random so that it fed me a, a random mix of forehands and backhands. And to begin with, I placed myself back around the service line. So it was a, a lower, tougher volley. And this is just kind of how I warmed up my hands and, and my volleys. So goal here was just to meet the ball cleanly. Uh, goal was to maintain good posture and use my legs to get down to, to meet the ball. And my target here was just simply to keep the ball deep and cross courts. And so quality contact here, uh, good contact points, and just keeping everything simple and staying low, are really the keys here. And by the way, if you want to be a good net player, I highly recommend you train from further, further away from the net. Typically, when you see players at your local courts working with a ball machine on their net game, they're right up against the net and they can just kind of reach out and like slap the ball back and forth. Anybody can hit a volley over the net from up there. But the ones that I need to work on when I'm coming to the net, my opponents are dipping it hard and low at my feet. And so I'm not moving or running or anything. I'm, again, because of my foot, I'm staying where I'm at. But receiving that type of ball, reading it, tracking it into the strings and keeping it nice and deep, it's a really critical skill. If you're enjoying kind of getting an inside look at my training session, do me a favor and click the like button, especially if you're getting some ideas here that you can take home. And the next drill that I did was a transition drill. I kept the, actually the exact same feed with the ball machine, but this time, instead of keeping myself inside the service line, I went back to the middle of no man's land, which means the very first feed is bouncing around the service line which is actually really challenging for me. I was getting a lot of low kind of skidding bounces off the line, and that made the very first shot really challenging. And once I fielded that first ball successfully, my goal was to smoothly, calmly, just kind of walk forwards and keep receiving volleys from the machine until I got all the way up to the net, basically until like I could touch the net and put the last ball away. And then I would pause the machine, walk back to no man's land and go through it again. So from no man's land to the net, I was maybe hitting five or six shots, just a nice, calm, easy transition. Again, I'm taking it easy on my, my foot, so I'm not doing anything really intense or dynamic right now. Goal is just to field a lot of different heights, different depths, different bounces, and be able to stay consistent while taking a kind of a dynamic uh, look at the same feed from a lot of different positions on the court. And if you like the net as much as I do, that's just critical to be able to receive different heights, different depths, place the ball calmly and consistently on the other side. This was really challenging for me today and the first ball in particular. And so I'm glad I spent some time here and I kind of sat on this drill for a little bit extra because I, I have to be confident with my net game to play my best. So do this type of drill, even if you don't have the random you know, setting on your ball machine, just have it go uh, back and forth, forehand, backhand, and keep the frequency pretty high so you're getting you know, uh, ball after ball after ball, and just make your way forwards as you keep your focus on quality contact. I finished up my training session today with serves. Most important shot in tennis, super critical, you get your reps in. I'm away from like a normal training schedule and when you see me hit, hitting my serves, you'll notice I'm not like launching up to the ball. I'm keeping my feet down. I'm trying not to put any stress on my foot or my ankle right now. So uh, a lot of stepping and kind of foot faulting, which I don't care about right now. My goal is just to set up some targets and try to be as accurate as possible without using my legs and just use my upper body. I want to try to keep my shoulders somewhat strong and I'm doing a lot of things at home in terms of, of workout and strength training to do that. But I, I feel like it's really important also to just get reps in with the overhand motion. So I started off with my targets in towards the tee and I hit a minimum of five good serves to each tee from the do side and then the add side. And I hit all spin serves for the tee today. Then I put the targets to a body serve right in the middle of the service box. And I hit a minimum of five to the add side and to the do side with a flat serve. And you can do whatever you want. This is just what I decided to do today. I did spin serve to the T, flat serve to the body, and then out wide I did spin serve again. And again, did uh, five out wide on the do side, five out wide on the add side. So this is my training session today. If, if you are honestly any level, these are skills I chose today 
specifically for the areas of my game I know I need to develop to beat stronger players, uh, players that are strong four, four or five and above. You can't do it without receiving pace and sending it back confidently. You can't do it without attacking on balls where you have an opportunity. And for me, I can't do it without transitioning confidently to the net and placing my serves well. So that's why, that's how rather I crafted today's training session. Feel free to go ahead and use it yourself, especially if you have a ball machine. I hope it's useful to you. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor and click like. And I'm doing my best to keep in shape, even though I, I can't do much on my foot right now. The ball machine is a great way to do that. And so if you are restricted at all in any way, or if you, even if you just need to get out on your own and get in a good quality training session, just copy what I did today and you'll find it a really good use of your time.